Aaron from Really Visuals. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. In today's video, we're reviewing a super unique lens. This is the TT Artisan 90mm f1.25 lens for the Sony E mount and also available for the following lens mounts as well. And as you might expect, the main appeal of this lens being that nice focal length of 90 millimeters, coupled with that super bright maximum aperture of f1.25, yes, that's right, which completely obliterates backgrounds and bokefies all your photos just like this. So let us know what you thought of the images down below in the comments section. Now, before we continue with this review, full disclosure, this was sent to us by TT Artisan for free, but this is not a paid or sponsored video in any way. And as always, all thoughts and opinions are fully independent. So with that, let's kick things off with the all important price tag. So the MSRP of this admittedly gorgeous looking lens is around $515. So it's not exactly what I'd call cheap, but not what I'd call overly expensive either. So there aren't a whole lot of 90 millimeter lenses for Sony e at least besides the macro lens, but a whole heap of 85 millimeter options within and even cheaper than this price range. So I think the biggest immediate deal breaker for some of you will be that this is a fully manual fully manual lens, so there is no AF whatsoever. So right off the bat, I will tell you that this isn't an ideal lens for shooting video really, especially coupled with that focal length. At least not if you plan to shoot anything that's moving, moving at all really. So yeah, it is possible to get nice looking still subject footage, but considering how many amazing auto focusing lenses there are already for Sony e -mount, it's hard to really recommend this for video. So yeah, sorry about that. If the idea of manual focus doesn't turn you off, then keep watching. Now, one thing that this lens does have going for it is just really, really amazing build quality. So it's an all metal body. It has a metal mount. It's a big, heavy, chunky thing, has a filter thread of 77 millimeters, and it just feels like an absolute tank. It really does. And it definitely feels and looks a lot more expensive than a $500 lens. Unfortunately, not only does it feel like a tank, it actually weighs like one as well, well, just over a kilogram. And we took this to a local like flower nature park, having been to the gym the day before. And honestly, it was actually pretty painful just lugging this around all day. On the flip side of that though, the weight does add this kind of reassuring solidity to the overall lens. And I love the way it, it gives you these little sort of tiny satisfying clicks as you go through the aperture range. It's very satisfying. I do wish that the focusing ring was rubberized, but it feels smooth to turn, but it does also require quite a bit of force and motion to cycle through. The distance to go from the minimum focusing distance to infinity is pretty long, so it feels quite laborious kind of like focusing through the lens. However, it does allow for greater precision. It also helps that the glass just looks gorgeous. I mean, just look at this thing. It's a lens that will definitely turn heads. But one minor gripe I do have though is the lens hood and the cap design is a bit strange as they both have to be screwed. To put on the lens cap, you have to reverse mount the lens hood and then screw on the lens cap. This all just adds to the feeling that this is not really a run and gun, fast point and shoot type of lens. It's really designed for kind of like slow, methodical shooters because if you, you know, you see something randomly that you want to shoot, by the time you unscrew the lens cap, unscrew the hood, put it on, turn on your camera, point, and then focus, try to get it in focus, get your subject, and then, yeah, the subject's gone already. So it's definitely not a run and gun lens. The good news though is that this lens can produce, as you saw earlier, some really, really nice looking pretty images with really amazing subject and background separation, while also being decently sharp as well. So the lens has 10 aperture blades and while the bokeh balls are not perfectly circular, they're kind of like more lemon shaped as you'll see here, but it still looks great in my opinion. There's some pretty nice looking bokeh. Now in terms of this lens wide open at f1.25, I didn't really know what to expect here. Now I have used the Canon 85mm f1.2 in the past and because the depth of field is just so shallow, regardless of whether you have have autofocus or not, it is quite difficult to get subjects in focus. But with this lens, as you'll see from some of these test images, you'll see that at f1.25, if you can nail down your focus, you can get some nice 
sharp-ish looking images, though perhaps just lacking a little bit of contrast. And at the minimal focusing distance, the lens can be quite soft, a lot more softer than I would have liked, to be honest. And it is worth mentioning too that the minimum focusing distance itself is a whopping 100 centimeters. So you do have to be quite far back in order to get sharp focus. If you move on to our test images, you will notice that at f1.5, the image is quite soft looking. It lacks contrast and there's vignetting visible at the corners. If you step down to f2.8 and then further down to f4 though, you'll see that things really improve in terms of contrast and the images here look a lot sharper. I think around this range, you get the best balance of sharpness while still retaining that nice creamy background blur. It's also worth mentioning that the lens is much, much softer at f1.5 at the minimum focusing distance than if you step back. As you can see on the samples here, this does improve if you step down to f2.8 and further. One thing I've noticed while shooting is that the center of the frame is never quite tacked sharp in focus until around sort of f8. So looking at these images here, the center is quite soft. And as we move on to the middle, the sharpness does get much better and we reach the corners, the image becomes soft again. This does improve as you step down with the optimal image quality at around F8. So a bit of a mixed bag overall, but ultimately the question I was asking myself while using this lens is, who is this really for? Now I'd personally use this lens myself for something like portraiture and for nature, still life. But there are so many great auto focusing options already on the market. You know, just take the Sony 85mm f1.8 for instance, which is a lot sharper than this, has a similar focal length, is much lighter and easier to carry around, and is fully auto focusing as well. So if I was going to be shooting portraits, I'd still probably recommend that over this. That being said, the TT Artisan 90mm is a truly unique lens. In fact, I don't think there has ever been a 90mm lens with an f1.25 aperture. And if you do enjoy using manual focus and you intend to shoot still light, Life, nature, in a portraiture when people aren't moving too fast, you, you know, enjoy being methodical and working slow, you're a bit more patient than I am, then I think this could actually be a very fun, good option for you. So while it's not a lens I would personally recommend to all people, for a niche group, I think it could end up being quite a, a popular lens with them. For me personally, it's a lens that I would use more for fun in my free time, not really for for work or for professional use. That being said, it is a lens capable of producing professional looking photos. So what do you guys think? Is this a lens that you think you'd use for yourself? Let us know in the comment section down below. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this review. Thank you once again to TT Artisan for making this video possible. If you found this review helpful, hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and also hit the bell notification so you'll always know when we have new videos coming up. You can also follow us on the socials down here. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys, peace.